Caribbean citizenship has long been a go-to backup plan for people with a little bit of money who want to secure their family's future on a permanent basis. And now, Caribbean citizenship is changing forever. <music> citizenship by investment is primarily focused in the Caribbean. They have five out of, out of about a dozen programs around the world others being Malta, which is at a very high price point for folks who want the best of the best, others being places like Egypt or Jordan, which are very niche offerings, or Vanuatu, which has become far less interesting in recent years. For the average person who has a small six-figure sum to invest, $100,000, $150,000 in that neighborhood, they can go and make a donation after passing a background check and filling out some forms and get citizenship in one of five different Caribbean countries. We help people at Nomad Capitalists do that all the time as part of their plans to have an escape plan from their country, reduce their taxes, increase their mobility. There's a lot of reasons why being a dual citizen can help you. And one of the reasons why people were attracted to Caribbean citizenship by investment is that, for example, you don't need to visit the country. With the exception of Antigua and Barbuda, where you need to go for five days within the first few years after getting the citizenship to renew your passport, you never need to go to any of the other countries. You can be a citizen of St. Lucia or St. Kitts and Nevis. You literally never have to go there. But now what's happening is that governments around the world that have high taxes, uh, that want to restrict their citizens' movements, and that have been talking in recent years about, hey, we might cancel your passport if you do this, hey, we might not let you leave the country if you do this, or countries like Australia actually forbidding citizens to enter or leave the country for well over a year. That talk is increasing. Of course, talk of taxes going up is increasing, and they want to shut off the exits. And so the United States got together with the Eastern Caribbean states and basically hammered out a deal that will change the way Caribbean citizenship works. It's not going to be entirely dead but it's going to be different and it's going to require a bit more effort. It hasn't been rolled out yet, but it's coming. Now, there is gonna be a silver lining in this process, which I'll explain to you in a moment, but basically the Caribbean prime ministers got together along with uh, the, the heads of the citizenship by investment units in each of the five countries. And they had a meeting with the United States. They're called the Caribbean Five and they agreed to six significant criteria that are going to apply to citizenship by investment programs in the future. Uh, number one, a collective agreement on the treatment of denials. This means basically that if you get rejected by one country, they're going to have to share that information and other countries will, generally speaking, reject you. There's already been some of that and so this is just kind of making it more formal. Um, but the issue is, if you've been rejected for a visa somewhere, for example, with which a Caribbean citizenship country has visa-free travel. So let's say you try to get a visa to go to Europe because you don't have that access, Europe rejected you. Until you get that visa to Europe again and, and, and right that wrong in their eyes, you can't get citizenship in a country. And so that would apply to apply, uh, for any of the countries, for example. Until you rectify that, you can't get it in any of them. Um, if any of them reject you for uh, let's say a minor criminal issue that could be used against you. And so historically, um, obviously, if you have a, uh, a, you know, a bad criminal record, none of them want you. But it's you know, I, 25 years ago, I uh, you know, streaked down the hall of my college dorm room and, and you know, they, they, they brought me in. I mean, that's something where, hey, maybe in some countries they would just laugh it off. In, in countries like the U.S., they'd be like, you know, we're taking you in. And so a country might overlook something kind of dumb like that. I think we, we talked to a few people at our event who said, oh, I, you know, I was uh, urinating in a bush and a police car pulled up behind me or something. Like, you know, 25 years ago, they might overlook that if you haven't done it again. But now they're going to say, okay, collective agreement on the treatment of denials. Number two, they're going to have an interview requirement. So uh, people who had to go through certain enhanced due diligence or where there were questions by the citizenship unit have been interviewed in the past. Uh, generally, either you would go there or you would pay to have people come out and see you. Now they want to make interviews applicable to everybody. Is this going to be the end of the world? Not necessarily, but it is going to add an extra step in the process, whether virtual or in person will be the criteria. So you still may not even need to go there, but you are going to need to go through an interview. You have always had to, generally speaking, write a statement why you want citizenship. And so Perhaps some of that just gets transferred into the interview format, but it is an extra step. Uh, also, additional checks. Each country that offers citizenship by investment will run checks on each application with their financial intelligence unit. There's already plenty of due diligence in these countries, and I think that Western countries really don't 
understand how much due diligence is done because they don't want to understand, right? Politicians, especially in Europe, would be very inconvenienced by the fact that people who get citizenship in a Caribbean uh, CBI program are actually going through much stricter due diligence than the people that European countries allow to get temporary and residence permits and even become naturalized as citizens. So now they're going to add additional checks. If you haven't you know, committed any kind of financial crimes or been involved in weird stuff with banks, you're going to be okay. Um, but one of the delays you've seen with people getting CBI passports is that the money has to go to the bank in the country. And so there's been cases where, you know, banks in their own country, they're like, we don't even want to deal with this kind of money because of all the heightened pressure. This is a common issue where you'll see, let's say you set up an offshore company somewhere, Hong Kong being one that used to be very popular. And Hong Kong very much wanted people to set up offshore companies, but the banks in Hong Kong were like, we don't want the risk of dealing with this. The banks in the Caribbean have been under pressure because they're small and because they need to maintain what are called intermediary bank relationships, people to send money outside of the region. And so they don't, in many cases, want the pressure of having money coming in from different people around the world, and that's been difficult. So now additional checks will mean the process is slower, which means if you want to get a second citizenship, you may have to wait longer. Now, here's the silver lining. If the programs follow through with their commitments, Washington is going to go and put in a word with the European Union, with the European Commission, and to make sure that these passports continue to be respected uh, in Europe, which is a place where Caribbean citizens can visit. Uh, there's always talk of, oh, is something going to happen with that? And quite frankly, uh, I don't have a huge concern around that. We can always have some kind of conspiratorial concern. And it's a good idea to be prepared, but I don't have a huge concern about that. And I think that the silver lining is, all right, we're going to follow some rules, and the U.S. is going to go and vouch for us uh, in Europe. Again, it's going to make the process a little slower for you. It's going to make the process a bit more involved uh, once this stuff is all rolled out. So the best thing to do, keep your nose clean, get started before you need it, uh, and get your passport portfolio together so that you're ready when the time comes. It may not be an issue for some, but... Many people wait until the last minute to get their second citizenship. They don't see the value in spending $100,000 until the pandemic is happening or until you know, their tax bill is going through the roof or until whatever. My approach has been I get stuff before I need it, and I always realize later, oh, I'm glad I did that. And so if you take that approach, then it won't be a big issue as long as you have a clean record. But if you're doing things in a hurry, you're going to encounter more stress. Uh, they're also requiring audits. The programs will be audited uh, either annually or every two years in accordance with internationally accepted standards. Again, there's already some of that going on down in the region. Uh, what I think will be the next possible step is exactly what Malta already put in place, which is where they do a look back after you get citizenship. And if they can find anything on you that you do after getting the citizenship, they can take it. Now, again, I'm the goody two-shoes of the offshore world. I'm not, I'm not suggesting you go out, get your citizenship in hand, and then go on a crime spree. I am saying uh, you never know what could happen. I mean, people make mistakes. Uh, not you making the mistake, but people could, you know, who knows what could happen. Uh, and so I think you're going to see more look-back provisions as part of this audit in the future where they say, oh, okay. And who knows what those look-back provisions are? I uh, have some thoughts that, uh, you know, people who are, uh, you know, have a high level of notoriety, for example, might have trouble getting citizenship. Andrew Tate being an example who's been in the news. Certainly someone who's sitting in jail right now is not going to be able to uh, get a citizenship by investment uh, product. Uh, however, if you would go back a year ago before there were any of these legal uh, wranglings going on, uh, I still think the level of notoriety he had countries would have shied away from that. And so once we get to audits, my question is, do we next go to countries looking back and saying, ah, gee, we wish we wouldn't have given that guy citizenship. I'm not saying that's in the rules right now, uh, and I don't think that's actually happening right now, but I'm saying in the future, you know, does the U.S. call down and say, hey, you know what, we don't like this guy, maybe you should get rid of him. Um, that's why I think that having more than one second citizenship, having triple citizenship is important. I'm being a little bit conspiratorial there, and it's not going to apply to the vast majority of people watching. But I do look at it as being a little bit of a slippery slope. I'm all for audits of programs to make sure they're being run properly. Uh, I don't entirely know why it's any other country's business, what these countries do with their money, because quite frankly, when I see, oh, they're building schools, they're building roads, they're, they're building low-income housing, they're actually using this money to develop their country. Uh, and I think some of them do a decent job with it. Um, 
but I think that there will be more things coming from that. Uh, the, second, the fifth thing is retrieval of passports. Request law enforcement assistance in retrieving revoked and recalled passports. Uh, pretty, pretty straightforward stuff. And then the sixth point, perhaps another slippery slope, treatment of Belarusians and Russians. Suspend processing applications from Russians and Belarusians. Now, four of the countries in the Caribbean already did that. Uh, one of them had reopened, and they're going to now uh, move on from that in, uh, in a quick order. You can have your own opinion on that. Certainly, there are plenty of Russians who didn't live in Russia. Um, maybe they didn't live in Russia because they were against the administration. Um, maybe they left because they're against the war. And somehow, everybody gets lumped into one camp. A lot of people in the U.S., as, uh, as Donald Trump once said, you think we're so innocent? You think we don't have killers? I mean, maybe some folks in the U.S. shouldn't be allowed to get passports. And I wonder, what's the slippery slope of who's going to be next? Now, do I think that Caribbean countries are going to stop allowing Americans to apply for second citizenship? No, they're right in their own backyard. Uh, they need that ap those applicants. And so all six of these things probably aren't going to impact in a dramatic way your ability to get second citizenship other than it once again emphasizes for me that you want to do so sooner than later because I do think things could be slower. One thing we don't see in this list is some kind of residence requirement. Malta, for example, for their what's called MEIN program does require you to spend several weeks there. They do require you to maintain a home there uh, for the first five years. There are some lawyers who would suggest, hey, you know what, it wouldn't be the worst idea if you just kept a house here. It's not letter of the law, but hey, it'd be a nice thing to have. Uh, and so will there be uh, the issue of genuine links? Right now, Antigua does require you to spend five days in the first five years. That's not really a big requirement, uh, but could that be expanded? Right? And again, if you're busy running your business, do you have time to go down and spend time in St. Lucia? Um, so again, not a big issue for the average person. I don't think anyone watching this is going to have their passport taken away, uh, whether you already have one or whether you're planning on getting one. Um, I don't think most people watching this, you know, I hope people will have a pretty clean record. I think if you're coming from a country like, you know, from a Western country, I think you're probably going to be fine. But there's going to be some more roadblocks. There's going to be some delays. And we're opening up a slippery slope where whomever it is that's the, the country we don't like today uh, can basically be shut off from having options, including if the reason they want options is they're not comfortable there uh, in their own country. And so what I would say is, get your passport portfolio put together. Nomad Capitalist helps people, not just with these five options, as many companies do. We handle all the citizenship by descent programs, mostly. We handle citizenship by investment, not just in the Caribbean, uh, but in Turkey, where we've gotten some great real estate deals for folks, not the buy an apartment that's overpriced. Uh, we advise you in the programs that we think don't make sense. We have access to residence programs, naturalization programs, all kinds of different citizenship programs because you may not even need a citizenship by investment product. Right? I've seen far too many people that call one of these fancy companies that you see and they qualify for citizenship by descent that they could get in a year and a half and they're sold on spending $200,000 for their family. They might not have needed that. Uh, and so listen, they may have needed it. It may have been a good third passport. but. You know, nobody really bothered to ask them because most companies have three or five or ten different options, not close to a hundred different options as, as we do. And most companies don't understand the tax implications. They don't understand the banking implications. They don't understand the whole picture, which is what we do here at Nomad Capital. So the bottom line is, as I've always told you, I've gotten my residences, citizenships, bank accounts, and companies in place before I've necessarily needed them. That way, I've very rarely been scrambling around at the last minute. You never know when the next black swan event is going to happen. You never know when your business is going to take off and you're going to need to have a place to go where your tax bill is lower, for example. And so this is a good reminder. As they make the process more difficult, there's nothing that really stands out to me as being absolutely terrible, uh, but it's a reminder to get moving.